everyone. In today's session, we will learn about a concept or normal feature of growth, which is differential growth, along with the Schemel's growth curve and cephalocaudal gradient of growth. Differential growth means that the human body does not grow at the same rate throughout life. Different organs grow at different rates, to different amounts, and at different times. And this concept is well explained by the cephalocaudal gradient and the Schemel's growth curve. Apart from this, the growth and development follow a pattern which is considered normal. Pattern in general sense means proportionality. Therefore, there exists a pattern of spatial arrangement of the body parts, while a change in these spatial proportions represent a pattern of growth. Now have a look at this figure which illustrates the change in overall body proportion that occur during normal growth and development. In fetal life, that is at about third month of the intrauterine development, the head takes up almost 50% of the total body length while the limbs and the trunk are still rudimentary and underdeveloped. By the time of birth, the trunks and limbs have grown faster than the head. So the proportion of the entire body devoted to the head is decreased to about 30%. Now this course is followed and this results in the progressive reduction of the relative size of the head to about 12% in the adults. Also note that at birth, the legs represent about one third of the total body length, while in the adult, they represent about half. Also note that there is more growth of the lower limbs than the upper limbs during the postnatal life. All of these changes, which are a part of the normal growth pattern, reflect the cephalocaudal gradient of growth, which simply means that there is an axis of increased growth extending from the head towards the feet. And even within the head and the face, the cephalocaudal growth gradient strongly affects the proportions. When the skull of a newborn infant is compared proportionally with that of an adult, it is easy to see that the infant has a relatively much larger cranium and a much smaller face. Also when the facial growth pattern is viewed against the perspective of the cephalocaudal gradient, it is seen that the mandible being farther away from the brain tends to grow more and later than the maxilla, which is closer. Now let's have a look at the Schemel's curve of growth, which was given by Richard Everingham Schemel. He proposed that the growth of different tissues can be summarized in four patterns or curves, namely the lymphoid, neural, general and genital curves. Apart from this, he also stated that the rate and timing of the postnatal maturation measured as a proportion of the total adult size vary among major systems of the human body. So first is the lymphoid curve. This describes the growth of lymph glands, thymus, tonsils, appendix and lymphoid patches of tissues in the intestine. Since this tissue is involved with child's developing immunological capacities including the resistance to infection, it reaches its maximum of about 200% of the adult size at late childhood and declines in the second decade of life which is related to the involution or shrinkage of the thymus and tonsils. Next is the genital curve which characterizes the growth pattern of primary and secondary sexual characteristics. This shows negligible growth until puberty. The genital tissues later experience extremely rapid growth and maturation during the adolescent spurt. Coming to the neural curve which depicts the growth of human brain, cranial vault, upper part of the face and orbit. The neural tissue grows very rapidly and almost reaches the adult size by around 6 to 7 years of age. Not only is there a rapid growth of head and brain, there is also increasing functional complexity of brain and the nervous system as we are learning language, emotion and various motor tasks. Hence the cranial vault of an infant is disproportionately larger than the rest of the craniofacial region. The fourth curve is the general curve which depicts the somatic and the visceral maturation. It describes the growth of the body as a whole and includes changes in the stature, weight and external dimensions. It describes the changes in the muscle, bone and other organs including the respiratory system, digestive system, urinary portion of the urogenital system, heart and the blood vessels. This is an S-shaped sigmoid curve which has four phases, that is, 
the rapid growth in infancy and early childhood, steady and constant growth during the middle childhood, rapid growth during the adolescent spurt, and the slow increase and eventual cessation in the growth after the adolescence. The development and growth of the craniofacial complex cannot be precisely described with the help of these four curves because the growth of craniofacial complex is somewhat integrated between the neural and the general maturity patterns. The growth of the craniofacial complex follows a gradient which moves from the cranium which is most mature to the anterior cranial base followed by the posterior cranial base then the maxillary length, upper facial height, corpus mandibular length and finally the ramus height which is the least mature. Thus considering the gradient, we can well comprehend from this given graph that the growth of the mandible closely approximates the general S-shaped pattern of the somatic maturation. So that was all about today's session. In case of any queries, you can drop your questions in the comment section below.